A lot of people just fail to make percentages work, man, because it's not that easy to choose winners, I would think, but you're saying that it's easy to choose winners, almost. I mean, like, easy is... Uh, you develop an expertise, right? Like you're, you know, most people would say that it's not easy to win online poker, but you're would be a, a pretty good example of someone who's been able to do it. If you work at it for a long time, it's not that difficult. Um, you have databases like Sharkscope, for example, where you can, you know, see if someone's winning. You search someone's results, you find out how well or poorly they're doing, and you can start with winners if you want. They get sought after by other staking groups, so that's that group is usually very competitive. Um, but you can also search for like break-even players and you can break down their performance, right? Um, and you can say, okay, like this person's a break-even player net, but that's because they lost a bunch of money playing 1Ks and 5Ks, right? And if like, uh, if they played zero to $100, they're actually winning, right? So you can mm -hmm. re-engineer their game selection so that they're actually a winning player that you start with, right? You provide them with financing um, and you're off to the races. I mean, like it's not that hard. It's not, it's not I wouldn't necessarily say that it's easy, the, the bigger problem comes from like personal life leaks, right? So sometimes you'll, you'll be working with someone who has a, uh, like a drug problem or you'll be working with someone who has, um, like you work with a lot of people who have really bad financial management, right? And so, you know, we've had to pay rent for a lot of our players. We've had to buy, you know, pay out leases for cars for a lot of, for a couple of players. Um, All right. So I've, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like it's, it, it gets to be like a pretty intensive like package when you stake when you stake like a group of people because you don't like you want to be able to provide a lot of support to people obviously you don't want to get taken advantage of but if you trust the person that you're working with and they you want to make sure that their life is kind of progressing in a way that's constructive so you don't want them to like miss opportunities just because they don't have enough money um, right so yeah well how do you figure out if you can trust them you start by work i mean you can start with references but references are usually limited uh, in staking because usually they haven't been yeah, staked by a bunch of other people. So references are always going to be limited. So you can mitigate the risk by starting off small, right? And scale into um, like higher stakes. You could be like, listen, the intention is to stake you for, um, I don't know, $300 ABI online tournaments or $200 ABI online tournaments, right? That's the, that's the intention. That's the end goal, right? But we're going to start at this other point so that if you, so that we can like build a rapport and like, you know, find out if you're, if, you sure. can, if we can work with you, if you can work with us, et cetera, right? So you start off small, scale into um, higher risk endeavors, which, which is pretty much a business strategy and everything, right? Start small and scale in, um, as opposed to just like biting off super high stakes with some guy that you never know and he yeah, just loses yeah, all your course. money. Well, yeah. That's pretty stupid. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> I, I, I've got two questions. One is, uh, I would think, well, do you deal with these uh, life leaks? At all, do you have ways of solving if someone is, say, uh, giving to spending too much of their money or has a mm -hmm. gambling leak or like, mm -hmm. you know, do you, are you actually able to prescribe the right person or whatever it is to mm -hmm. help with these sorts of things? So I don't have like a team of specialists on the call that like you know to help people cope with things, but you would be I think surprised at how many people just need to talk with someone who behaves maybe a little bit more rationally than they do. Um, and having certain conversations about like things that aren't important or things that are important, um, pushing them to resources that are helpful. Um, so there are uh, like plenty of like early retirement, um, like financial management, like money management blogs and resources that are available online. Mr. Money Mustache is actually like a very, like sort is a very, probably the most popular, um, uh, like extreme early retirement type of thing. But the, the lessons that come from that are really about like financial management and money planning. And I refer people to that a lot um, when they really struggle with uh, like financial man management issues. But I also work with people directly, right? So like I'll just, we'll get on call, we'll have conversations. I have managers who do the same thing. And sometimes uh, the life leaks come from like, they have personal problems like uh, with, with a spouse or with a, with a loved one, with a girlfriend or whatever. And those things are contributing to like friction and they don't have someone to, to like kind of talk, talk with and like vent, if you will. And so they end up, if they don't have those resources or those outlets, then they go spew the money off. Like they'll just like, they'll get really emotional and they'll go do something really damaging. Um, but if they, if they have, it sounds ridiculous, but if they have people that they can talk to about their problems, they're less likely to behave in kind of like destructive ways. Um, especially if like the behavior is like audited, 
because when you stake them, their behavior is audited, right? Like if they go gamble off all of their money, they know that they're going to have to talk to somebody about it. Whereas if they're on their own, it's, you know, there's less personal responsibility to a third party. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to enforce people to collect the debts because now there's like an ad hoc audit to it uh, because people know if there's accountability, people don't act the same way. Uh, yeah, no, they don't. If, if, there's, uh, if there's not. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it makes sense that that if someone's going through some tough stuff, that if they just have someone to talk to, that would uh, that could potentially help a lot, I could see. Um, no, that's interesting that you apparently can solve, well, it, does, it makes sense that you can solve something like bad financial planning. I'm wondering if you can solve deeper issues such as uh, certain kinds of tilts or um, mm. the, the, I would think there's different kind of methodologies for solving like, you know, those sort of soft leaks, like certain kind of tilt, like maybe someone can't bluff enough or mm -hmm. um, they, they just, uh, uh, they just can't take being three bet three times in a row or sure. It's those, uh, if you could solve those as well, that really solves like a large myriad of problems and it leads into bigger stuff. Yeah. So I would say like a lot of the problems that like winter, like tilting, um, a lot of those problems come from people not knowing what to do, right? Like frustration oftentimes, not all the time, but frustration oftentimes comes from people that do like comes from a lack of knowledge. Like if you don't understand how things work, um, like they don't understand, for example, someone three bets them three times in a row that maybe he, the guy's just running good. Maybe he's not picking on you, right? And so mm -hmm. because they, they don't understand how the game works at all, they get really paranoid. Like they're right. And so educating people about how poker works, coaching them regularly in terms of their actual skill sets, right? I personally believe that for the most part, confidence comes from knowing what to do and like demonstrating that you actually know what to do, right? And so yeah, if you learn, yeah. So if you learn how a spot works, and then you drill how the spot works with no money at stake, um, this is like more of a more of a recent phenomenon with the way that the technology has gone. But if you're coaching someone today, drilling is a big part of how I coach today. So if I teach someone how the spot works, we go over how it works. We go over all of the ideas about how c betting from early position versus the big blind works. Ten high plus boards. You know, in tournaments, we're going to c bet pretty much c bet range on ten high plus boards, especially with no straights possible. And then they go drill it, right? So they develop comp. So they go from we filter in their own database for all the times that they played the hand badly, which would be checking in those scenarios, right? Then from there, we say that this checking's bad. You should be betting in these scenarios. Then from there, they go drill the scenario. And now they know how the scenario works. So once they have the confidence in that spot, the mistakes get much less common, I guess. And the, the emotional baggage that comes with the spot is reduced. So like as you work through issues in their strategy itself, the tilt issues are diminished. Doesn't mean, they go, doesn't mean they go away. But my primary mechanism or strategy for dealing with like people who tilt because of something at the table is making them a stronger player. Like that's the like the number one okay. way that this I would seems resolve. to not solve it at its core, by the way. But it's you know it, it seems to solve it uh, by just making someone. Yeah, just like making someone less likely to encounter the situations that cause them to tilt, basically. Correct. Yeah, I mean, like, I think that if I come on here and I, and I claim that I can, like, I'm a magician and I can make make someone who's really emotionally charged less emotionally charged, I don't have that. I don't have that skill set. So I apologize for that. I don't have that yeah, skill set. Okay. But I, would I can take someone and put them, make sure that they're when they're playing poker that they're just less emotionally frustrated while they play the game. Right and cause them to erupt less as a result of that. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Well, I would think uh, I, I'm a little bit surprised you didn't um, go into this topic, but uh, I would think breath work and meditation actually would solve mm -hmm. it. As I'm talking, I'm like, oh yeah, duh, of course, breath work and meditation like does exactly this, sure. uh, or that's one of the many functions of it um, mm -hmm. that attempts to solve it. It's a problem's core. Mm -hmm.